In this video, I'll be discussing about the vocals approximation method. And this is a method which is used for finding the initial BFS to a transportation problem. Now, as the name suggests itself, it's vocal approximation method. So sometimes we may also call this as VAM method. And in this VAM method, uh, what we do is we find the cell having smallest and next to smallest cost in each row and each column. So what is, and then we write their difference this is what we call penalty because we calculate here uh, the difference and that difference we call, call as a penalty so this is also called it as penalty method although most commonly we uh, name it as VAM method but in some time in some literature it is also written as penalty method and that penalty we write along each row and each column now let's see what this penalty means penalty means it is a difference of the cost per unit that it's going to occur if we skip the least cost. So uh, to understand that, let's take this as an example. And in this example, I've considered three sources and four destination. Now in the first source, let's see in the first source, the least cost is four and the next least cost is six because what we need to do is, we need to consider smallest and next to, to smallest cost in each row as well as in each column. I have considered in the first case, what is the difference between these two? The difference is two. So if by chance we do not do the allocation here in this least cost, assuming that I have to do my allocation in my first cell uh, using my Northwest or something here, I want to allocate in four, but if I skip this one, then I do an allocation in six. This means every time I do an allocation in six, there would be a difference of, difference of the cost is two rupees. So this, this means every per unit is going to cost me 2 rupees extra. Similarly, if I look at now S2, this the least is 4 and the next least is 5. So the difference is 1. This means this 1 is an extra cost that I'm going to bear if I do not do the allocation in the smallest. Or what is, we say, what is the difference between the next smallest cost? So that's the extra cost that we are going to bear. And similarly, in the third cell, it is the least is 1 and the next least is 2. So the difference is 1. The penalty is 1. And similarly, now we calculate for the column wise. So if you look at column wise, the least is 2 and the next least is 4. So the difference is 2. In this case, least is 6. But 6 occurred at 2 places. So whichever 6 we choose as a least, the among the remaining ones, so we choose uh, the least cost in the remaining one is also 6. If I select this 6, then among the remaining one, among the remaining one, the least is again six. So the penalty here is zero. And in the third column, the least is three and four. So the penalty is one. Last uh, case, the least is one and the next least is six. So the difference between these two is five. Now what it says is that select the row and column with maximum penalty. So that's a step number two. And find the cell that has least cost in selected row column. So among these two together, among the row penalties and column penalties all together, select the penalty which is with the highest, uh, select the penalty which is highest. So here the five is highest and in that particular, in that particular highest penalty, select the cell with the least cost. So this is the cell actually with the least cost. So this would be the one where I have to do the allocation XIJ. And that is because we want to avoid the extra cost. So because if we do not select this five and suppose if we uh, choose the next least cost in that particular six. So that means per unit uh, we are bearing five rupees extra cost. So we see here the two relative costs and we try to minimize this quantity by fixing the least cost cell. And in case if there's a tie in penalty. So what, we, what do I mean by in case there's a tie in penalty? So suppose there's a 5 here uh, in the penalty, there's a 5 here. The other penalties are a little smaller than this quantity. So something like this. Now the highest penalty is 5 here and the highest penalty is 5 here. And in this row, suppose in this row, the least cost is uh, 2, 1, 3. And if I look at 5, the least cost is something like 2, 6, 3. So if I select this 5, my least cost is 2. If I select this 5 row wise the least cost is 1 so we need to first select this 5 because according to this the least cost is this one so that's the first way we can uh, break the tie choose the least cost available 
and in case if there is a least cost i also suppose instead of the 6 it was 1 suppose here it was 1 now even in this 1 and 1 there is a tie so we want to then check on the xij where we can send this maximum of xij how much we can allocate actually into these two quantity so whatever we want to allocate this should be the maximum quantity or even if we don't break that tie we can allocate arbitrary uh, then also there is no change in the result and then in this step number third we uh, supply and demand are adjusted and we repeat this step process now let's see this whole process again in a particular example bfs using vogel's approximation method to given transportation problem now suppose in this case uh, let's first write uh, the transportation table so i'm going to write all the cost in the table and because there are four destinations columns so let me to make quickly and then we write the cost here in the boxes 19 30 50 and then we got 10 we got 70 30 40 60 and we got 48 and we have 70 and we got 20 and i'm also going to quickly check whether the problem is balanced or not yes the problem is balanced so the summation of this supply and demand they both are same we can check quickly okay so this is same and we have these as three sources and we got these are four destinations now in this case again i want to calculate the penalties so let's find the difference between the smallest and next smallest cost so if you look at the first row what is the difference in the first row the least is 10 and the next least is 19 so let's calculate here penalties and on this side also i'm going to calculate penalties so in the first case the least quantity is 10 and the next least is uh, 19 so the difference between these two is 9 so the first penalty is 9 and in the next case quickly we have 30 and 40 so the penalty here is 10 and in the similar next case the least is 8 and the next least is 20 so the penalty here is 12 if we now look at column wise what is the column wise so we have penalty 19 and 40 so the penalty here is 21 and in the next case the least is 8 and the next least is 30 so the penalty is 22 in the third column we got 40 and 50 as a least two so we have the difference as 10 and in the last column the least is 10 and the next least is 20 so the penalty is 10 so that's the difference basically penalty is nothing but it is difference of least and next least okay so that's the difference of least and next least now choose the maximum choose the maximum penalty what is the maximum penalty here we have the maximum penalty as 22 so if we have the maximum penalty as 22 in that selected penalty so this correspond to a column in that selected penalty choose the cell with the least cost so this is the cell with the least cost so here i want to do the allocation and how much is the allocation the rule for the allocation is same xij which is nothing but it is minimum of availability and the demand so here i want to do the allocation so 8 and 18 so 8 will go here so once this 8 will go here this means that we are uh, we are going to uh, this demand has been completed so this has so the demand is completed now in this case so once we say that this demand is completed so this means this section is crossed off and how much is remaining here now remaining here quantity is 10 so this is 8 is gone completed so the demand d2 uh, the, the demand for destination d2 is complete now repeat this whole process once we do this once we allocate then again we need to repeat this process for the second case again now i need to calculate again the penalty in the first row now don't look at this one uh, the second column which is crossed off only look at d1 d3 and d4 and then calculate the penalty again in d1 d3 d4 the least is 10 and 19 so the penalty is 9 
but in s2 the least is 70 40 and 60 among these three the least is 40 and the next least is uh, 60 so we take the penalty as 20 in the third column in the third row least is 40 then 70 and 20 so the least here is 20 and the next least is 40 so i'll take the difference between these two that is 20 now if you look at the cost in the first column there is no there has not been any change so this remains this second column is already exhausted so i'm just putting a dash here because we do not want to allocate anything in the second column in the third column the least is 40 and the next least is 50 so this quantity is 10 and similarly in the last is 10 again choose the uh, highest penalty again highest penalty can be selected from both either it is from row or a column so here now the highest penalty is again in the uh, again in the column so in that again choose the least cost cell so now the least cost cell is 19 so now the least cost cell is 19 in this column in this first column so earlier it was 22 so in this case i want to allocate 5 or 7 so a minimum of 5 will go here once a 5 will go here so this means this is again exhausted once this is exhausted that means here i am left with the two units and now again i'm going to repeat this process once i repeat now again this process so this means my next penalty here is in the first row the least is 10 and the next least is 50 so the penalty here is 40 in the second row least is 40 and the next least cost is 60 so the penalty is 20 in the similar way in the third row it is 50 and if i look at column wise now the first two columns are exhausted because the penalties have been gone uh, penalties have actually uh, given uh, exhausted the sub, uh, supply uh, demand for d1 and d2 and for d3 it is 40 and 50 so this is uh, again 10 and for the last also it is 10 now we see here the penalty now highest penalty now occurs in the row so now i am going to select the row so we have to always look the penalties all together among row and column all together so this correspond to this third row and in the third row there are only two possibility of the allocation either i do it in d3 column or i do it in d4 corresponding to s3 and among these what is the least column so the least is this 20 because i have to choose the least cost cell in this i am going to allocate a minimum of 10 and 14 so this 10 is allocated here once this 10 is allocated here so this means it is going to now this 18 is completely gone so 10 units are here 8 units are here so this is completely now gone so the supply column has completely finished and here i am still left with 4 units that i still need to supply now again we need to calculate the penalties but we see here the last uh, s3 column they are exhausted with the supply now we are still remaining with this one in the first row we have cost as least cost as 10 and the next least cost is 50 so this is 40 and similarly this is 20 these are gone here the least cost is 40 and the next is 50 and then we got 50 now the least cost comes here again in the column so this is the sorry highest penalty comes here in this case 50 and the least cost cell is the 10 units so we have a minimum of 2 and 4 so i'm going to allocate here this 2 so now once i allocate this 2 here this means that this column is exhausted and this 2 is also gone this 2 is also gone so once this 2 is gone so this means the only possibility remaining now here is that uh, we can allocate now in the remaining uh, this this particular these two particular cell the only possibility that this seven unit will go here there is no other possibility and this four unit will uh, this four unit i have not cut it here so this two is now the remaining two the remaining two units will be going here
so that makes it your nine and if you sum these allocation we must always check because sometimes there's a calculation mistake while writing we must always sum these allocation five plus two makes this seven seven plus two makes this nine eight plus ten makes this eighteen and if you sum them column wise this is five eight in the second column in the third it is seven 10 plus 2 plus 2 it is 14 so that means our constraints are already satisfied this is a feasible solution obtained from Vogel's approximation method now corresponding to this if I want to calculate what is the value for z so z is nothing z at initial bfs and that we have calculated using Vogel's approximation method is just simply multiplying the allocation with the corresponding cost so this is 5 units supplied and 19 rupees is the per unit cost so we just simply multiply this quantity with the cost allocation with the cost will give me the value for initial z and that's how we can calculate the first initial value for z so this is Vogel's approximation method so in the next video you can watch some more examples of Vogel's approximation method to find the different cases